I've always said that the first thing to do before seriously looking for a house is to get pre-qualified. Now, I may amend that a little bit. Even before that important step, it would be a good idea to become credit ready and understand the credit score from the agencies that the lender will be using to pre-qualify you. Hi, I'm Gordon Baker, and let's dive into credit scores and some fine-tuning that can be helpful to prepare you to get pre-qualified for a mortgage or just help you monitor it. When I say credit score, I'm referring to the FICO score, which is the most commonly used scoring system. 90% of lenders use a FICO score for pre-qualification. You may also hear a Vantage score, which was developed in 2006 as an alternative to the FICO scoring model. Your credit score is important for two reasons. Number one, most loans have a minimum credit score requirement. If you don't have that minimum score, you can't qualify for that type of loan. For example, an FHA loan requires at least a 580 credit score. Conventional loans, the minimum is 620, and a jumbo loan has a minimum of at least 680. Number two, your credit score will influence your mortgage rate. It can affect your mortgage interest rate by 1%. So on a $400,000 loan, that's over $250 per month. This will depend on the loan program and the actual credit score. Conventional loan rates are more affected by your credit score. In addition, conventional loan mortgage insurance is highly influenced by your credit score. FHA and VA loans, which are government insured, are more forgiving of a lower score. Now, a couple of things a credit score does not do. It does not determine the amount you can borrow. Every so often when I'm discussing prices with a potential buyer, I hear the comment, my credit score is over 800, as if that will allow them to buy a $900,000 home regardless of their income. Second, a good credit score does not override events such as bankruptcy, foreclosure, a short sale or switching to being self-employed. Now here's something you probably didn't know. When you find out your credit score and want to brag about it a little bit, my question would be, okay, that's all well and good. What version, version is it? Did you know that there are over 16 different versions of your FICO score? Different industries use versions that are fine-tuned based on interest industry specific risk behaviors. A good example is when we bought a car about three years ago. The finance manager told us that our credit scores were each over 810. Wow, I probably walked out standing a little bit taller knowing I had a credit score over 800. Then shortly thereafter, I checked on my score that a lender would use and it was closer to 750. Ouch, what happened? Who wasn't being totally truthful? Nobody. They just each use different versions specific to their industry. Now, has this been helpful? If it has, please do me a favor and like the video and subscribe to let me know you're finding value. Before we get into the components of a credit score, uh, make note of this website www.annualcreditreport.com. If you're wondering how the three different credit bureaus, which are Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, see your credit worthiness, this is the place to go. While they don't give, uh, well, they don't give a specific score, you can see inquiries, accounts with payment histories, bankruptcies, judgment, and liens. Now, last year, a report by Consumer Reports found that 80, excuse me, 34% of credit reports had at least one error. For that reason alone, it's good to check your credit report periodically. Now, a credit score has a range between 300 to 850. There are five elements to your credit score, which are payment history, credit utilization, length of credit, new credit, and credit mix. Payment history is the most influential factor in calculating your credit score, accounting for 35%. Research shows that your track record of payment tends to be the strongest predictor of the likelihood that you'll repay all the debts agreed to. Now, this includes accounts such as credit cards, mortgage loans, retail accounts, and installment loans. A late or missed payment can affect your score by over 90 points and stay on your credit score history for up to seven years. Now, smaller delinquent amounts and those that are older will have less of a negative effect. Next is credit utilization, which is weighted at 30%. Now, utilization means the amount of your available credit that you, are, that you are using at the time your score is calculated. So if the balance on your credit card is 400 and the available credit is 1,000, your utilization is 40%. It's recommended that you keep it under 30% and the lower, the better. 
Here's a general breakdown of the utilization scores and their effect on your score. The important thing to remember is that the bank looks at your credit uh, balance once a month at the end of your billing cycle and this is what is reported to the credit bureaus. The end of your billing cycle is different from the due date that appears on the statement. One of the reasons given for not closing a credit card is that it will reduce the overall available credit and therefore increase utilization which is not a good thing. Now we come to the length of credit, which is 15% of the credit score. Now, this is just one thing that takes time, plain and simple. It will track how long you've been utilizing credit, and obviously, the longer, the better. New credit is the next component, and it is weighted at 10%. This is adding new or existing forms of credit. The bottom line is you should only add credit when it is necessary. Approach new credit with care and have a plan to repay it. That brings us to the credit mix, 10%. For creditors, it stands to, re to reason that the better you manage different loans and lines of credit, the lower your risk when uh, lending you money. Honestly, focus on the first two elements since they add up to 65% of your score. There is not much you can do for the length of credit. Time will take care of that. So what can you do right now? Set up a system to make sure the bills are paid on time since that is 35% of your score and the downside for a missed payment is high. Understand credit utilization, your billing cycle, and that by closing a credit card, it will negatively affect your utilization score. Review your annual credit report for errors and challenge any inaccuracies. It has a wealth of information and also when somebody tells you your credit score, understand there are many different versions of FICO scores. Your FICO score from one industry will not correlate necessarily with the FICO score from another industry. Implement these items so you can become credit ready and optimize your credit score before you get pre-qualified. If you don't plan on purchasing a home or a car in the near future, they are beneficial to help you maintain and improve your score. Thank you.